Hey guys, Zarak here, and today I'm bringing you guys another video, and I tried to do this video before and it was horrible. I'm not really sure how to say and structure this video, so I do apologize if it's really, really bad, but I'm kind of not sure how to say it. So, we're going to be doing a Pokemon Theory, and spoiler alert here, I'm going to be spoiling Mystery Dungeon, um, all of them, in fact, I'll be spoiling in this. So... I highly suggest that if you guys want to play that game, uh, play the games and not have spoilers, probably click off this video. I do appreciate you coming here, but unfortunately, it will give you spoilers for the game. So, we're going to be doing a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Theory, and it's something that, to be honest with you, I can't really credit myself for. I saw someone say it in a comments to a soundtrack. I'm not sure which soundtrack it was, though, uh, so I do apologize that I can't credit the guy's name, but I saw it. I thought about it, I spoke to my friend Kieran about it, who's also very big into Mystery Dungeon games, and we sort of come up with some ideas about how this could work, and the fact that it really, really could work, and it might even be the next thing in the list. So, just to give a general synopsis here, the Mystery Dungeon games, as a lot of people will know, is a spin-off game of the Pokemon franchise done by Chunsoft which you play as a Pokemon, normally human transformed into a Pokemon, but you play as a Pokemon, you go through these dungeons called Mystery Dungeons, which change the layout and has enemy Pokemon in them. And they are pretty renowned for having really good storylines, really good soundtracks uh, to link in with them. And they're quite immersive, emotional, and just really drawing to an audience of hardcore Pokemon fans that really wanted to be a Pokemon in a sense. And they did the game, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Explores of Time, Darkness, and then eventually Sky, which was a little bit of an adaptation, but it was pretty much the same game. And probably about 65-70% of the community would say that they were the best Mystery Dungeon games. I think that if we go for 65%, I would say that 15% probably say Red and Blue. And then 20% would, no, sorry, 15% would say Super Mystery Dungeon, and 5% would say Gates to Infinity. So, that is a pretty popular game. And before this year, well, last year, sorry, should I say, 2015, no one thought you could even get anywhere close to it. The immersion in the game, the emotions, the soundtrack, the story, it was absolutely beautiful. It had a big ass plot twist with Dusk Noir and Grovile and also had the best boss probably ever to exist which is Primal Dialga and in all it was probably one of the best if not the best Mystery Dungeon game probably even Pokemon game ever to be completely honest with you but obviously that is my opinion there and no one thought you would even get close to being able to be match it in any of those aspects. They did Gates to Infinity and it flopped. It did really, really badly. I don't think many people even enjoyed it. I didn't even finish the game. And, you know, you had Red and Blue. It was really good. It was a nice idea. Then they did Explorers of Time, Darkness and Sky. And it was best game ever. Then they did Gates to Infinity and it flopped. So moving into Super Mystery Dungeon, when that got announced and started getting leaked out, I was pretty excited because I was like, right, this is the time for redemption. And all in all, it was a very good redemption. And in my opinion, I would actually probably rate it higher than Explorers of Time, Darkness and Sky. So the issue, though, the big main issue that I could probably say with Super Mystery Dungeon is that they kind of borrowed plot ideas. And by borrowed, I mean they completely ripped, basically. So major, major, major spoiler alert here because this is going to ruin the whole game for you. But the final boss is Dark Matter. Dark Matter feeds off darkness and energy and is in form of a ball with an eye. As far as I'm aware, that is also in Kirby from 1999. Then also you had these things called Void Shadows, which were basically like these black parasites that swallowed up Pokemon and made them disappear. And they can also make themselves into that Pokemon. What a surprise. That's from Pokemon uh, movie, I think, 7. Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. 
They also use Evertol as basically the main protagonist behind Dark Matter and used its Oblivion Wing to turn Pokemon to stone, which is the main part of the game. What a surprise, that's in Pokemon Movie 16. So they pretty much took the game from about three or four different aspects and made it into one game. And yeah, the story was amazing. The game was absolutely brilliant. But it kind of felt a little bit cheap because it was already made in a sense. Like it was just adapted. It was changed. Uh, I'm not discrediting Sunsoft. I mean, I couldn't do much better. I couldn't do any better at all. I was doing a fucking shit job. But it wasn't exactly a brand new idea. And I'm not sure how they would really make another Mystery Dungeon. I feel like everything they try to do will be like Phoenix to Infinity. It will just flop. And I really don't want the series to die. Because the series is probably one of the best series I've ever played, if not the best. And I think Chunsoft really did a good job. So what do they really do to change the game up? And to match, if not better, Super Mystery Dungeon and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, Darkness and Sky. And this is where this guy's comment came in. And like I said, I'm really sorry that I can't credit him because, or I think it was him anyway, because I haven't got his name here. But he said that what if the final boss summoned you into the Pokemon world to stop it? And... It's a bit of a mindfuck, I will agree, but if you think about it, it could work. So, let's for example say we have Mew, and Mew is the evil protagonist in the game. Uh, I think protagonist is the right word, probably not. Uh, but it's the evil character, it's the main evil character in the game. Now Mew has the power to basically wipe memories and relish itself into new past and future lives. I think the best way to put it is. I can't really understand it, but if you guys have played Super Mystery Dungeon, you'll understand exactly what I mean. Now, what if it knew that somehow it was going to become corrupt or whatever, because corruption is basically a main part of every single game nowadays, and knew it was going to turn evil, and so then summoned you at the time that it was about to go to be evil to stop it it's a bit of an interesting theory in a sense because you can play around it so many different ways if you look at the main game series of pokemon um, pokemon black and white and you take the character n for example n was basically second in command to Gexus in um, Team Plasma, I believe they were called. But he thought that they were separating Pokemon for the good of Pokemon. And he believed that he could connect with Pokemon. Whereas Getsus had a completely different idea. And was just using N as a, like, basically, like, brainwash. So what if you were that character that was getting brainwashed, in a sense. And then you had to be convinced to then go back on basically quote-unquote your master in a sense to save the world there's all these different possibilities the one thing that pokemon have never done as far as i'm aware i might be wrong in any game ever any main game any side game is they've never had you be basically the evil character ever as far as i'm aware i, I might be wrong in that but I'm just trying to think back to any game and there isn't you're, you're not bad in any of them. So I think that would be pretty interesting to really speculate and just see the ideas. And I, I thought it was a really, really good idea. And I do thank that guy for the comment. So that's really going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. What would you guys like to see in a Mystery Dungeon? What would you guys uh, ideally want to do in a Mystery Dungeon? And what do you think would top? Super Mystery Dungeon and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, Dark, and Sky. So, this has been Zarak. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new and enjoy my content. And I will see you guys in another video. Peace out, everybody.